Hi, I'm Dr. Dawson Haas and welcome back to Geos 1000 Dynamic Earth. And in this learning module, we're going to learn about sedimentary rocks. It corresponds to Chapter 5 in the book and your next lab, Sedimentary Rock Lab. Uh, we'll deal with this, this, this kind of stuff that's right in front of me. Sedimentary rocks are formed from sediment, which is formed from the erosion and weathering of some other kind of rock. So you start off with an igneous rock or metamorphic or some other sedimentary rock, for that matter. And exposed at the Earth's surface to wind, rain, freeze-thaw action, uh, physical erosion, and chemical weathering occurs to all rocks exposed to the Earth's surface at different rates based upon what kind of material they're made of. But the weathering processes that go on on our planet weather down material, erode it, and then it is transported uh, by wind or by water downstream. Uh, it is transported and then can accumulate somewhere else as a body of disaggregated rock bits, small fragments and grains that have all been eroded away from somewhere else, a, a nearby mountain range, and then deposited downstream somewhere to form bodies of sediment underwater. Or in the case of sand dunes, right there on the, the dry land surface. And so when this material collects, it can be preserved if it then gets buried and is subjected to geological forces that with pressure and temperature, compact the rock together to where it solidifies into one solid mass. This used to be grains of sand on a beach, but it was buried and compacted down to form sandstone. And in fact, sedimentary rocks contain a lot of information about the past. And we can know that by looking at something like this. What you'll learn about in this chapter and in this learning module is about how sedimentary rock can, can record the details of what happened one day. This is an example of ripple marks. Ripple marks formed in what was soft sediment at the time at, at a beach or just beneath the surface of the ocean uh, near shore in sand. And then the prevailing current and wind directions were pushing the water to make these ripple marks in the, in the soft sand. And then, let's say a storm comes through and brings in a whole wash of sand on top of that, or mud on top of it that doesn't disturb this, but just blankets it. If that gets buried over millions of years and compacted, that sand can be compacted into sandstone, and it can preserve that memory of the events of one day, one afternoon, millions of years ago. Sedimentary rocks can record fossils. Like this example here. It looks like a tabulate coral to me. And this is in limestone. Limestone doesn't form by taking small particles like sand and compacting them down. Limestone forms when you actually take calcium carbonate that's dissolved in water and it precipitates out to basically form the shells of planktonic sea creatures, uh, corals, and other forms of life. And that stuff can accumulate up and give us masses of sedimentary rock that can actually record direct evidence of the life that was alive at that time. In this part of the course, you're going to be learning about the process of weathering and erosion, a little bit about the properties of water, because you have to sort of understand why water works so well. Water is a polar covalent molecule. In chemical terms, that's what it is. But what that means is that water can actually dissolve things really easily that can be charged ions in solution. Salt dissolves in water because it then forms sodium plus and chloride minus in the water. Uh, water is good at weathering and eroding things. And what you're going to learn about in this section of the course is something about the properties of water, like I said, also about the basics of weathering and erosion processes, and then what they produce, which is sedimentary material that can be compacted into sedimentary rock. You have things what you call clastic sediments, like this sandstone here, made of clasts or particles. So you accumulate together billions of particles of sand, compact them into sandstone, there you go. Silt, tiny, tiny grains too small for you to see. But if you take silt and compact it down, you make siltstone or shale. And obviously you can also preserve uh, some of the fossils of life that was present in that situation then. So sandstone is a clastic sediment, but limestone is not. Limestone is considered a chemical or biochemical sediment. Because, in fact, the particles of calcium carbonate in here were not just crystallized in water. Uh, usually we're talking about processes where plankton precipitates shells around themselves. By the billions. As they die, they sift down and collect. And so they didn't form of clasts of continental rock weathering into smaller particles. They form directly in the water through biochemical processes. 
Another kind of biochemical sed uh, sedimentary rock is coal, of course, which used to be land plants. In this part of the course, you're going to be learning all about that stuff. How sedimentary rock really does record a vast amount of information. And from it, we can learn what life was around then. We can learn what the climate was like by looking at the geochemistry of some of the minerals in a rock like this. So you know how old it is and where it came from because it tells us, sedimentary rock tells us what the environment used to be like then. Where this rock was laid down originally is soft sediment. This is what it was like. It was, looks like clean sand, quartz sand, beach, like I said, or near shore environment. Some shales that we, we find and we dig up uh, were obviously laid down deep in the ocean. And so we can look at ancient paleo environments and, and what their conditions were using sedimentary rocks. So in this part of the course, uh, chapter 5, of course, in the textbook, Sedimentary Rocks and the Corresponding Sedimentary Lab, uh, you'll be learning about all that kind of stuff. How to tell one sedimentary rock from another. Uh, in lab, especially, I'm going to be giving you a chance to go on virtual field location trips where you see sedimentary rocks and sedimentary features in their normal environment, where the rock is weathering to produce the, the results of taking sedimentary rock and weathering it. What kind of sediment does it produce? Well, sandstone weathers out to produce sand, as you might expect. Something like a shale is going to weather out and produce more mud. Um, something like a limestone doesn't really produce that kind of particle sediments. It just sort of dissolves. You can recognize what these are and where they came from if you know what you're looking for. And what we're going to try to train you to do in this part of the course is to kind of pay attention to that. Sedimentary rocks may not be the most visually striking in the world in a sample like this, but I guarantee you if you're looking at them on the wall of the Grand Canyon or massive cliffs of layered sedimentary rock tilted by tectonic processes, uh, it is very impressive indeed. And they record a vast amount of information. So you can be learning about that in this part of the course. And not just about the rocks themselves uh, and how to recognize their features, of course, but about the environments that they were laid down in what we call sedimentary facies. Facies meaning the sedimentary environment where a particular kind of rock is produced by, say, uh, fine sediment filtering down in deep water, uh, water rushing through rivers or along braided streams, or sand deposited uh, into dunes by the wind. All these kinds of environments and their results are recorded in rocks if you know how to find them. And so hopefully after this part of the course is over, you'll be able to do just that.